Hey everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with me, Redneck Einstein. We are playing the career mode, and today's mission is to build a new surface outpost on the moon. Now you can see the desirabilities that are inbuilt into the contract. They want us to land it on the moon, obviously. We need to uh, have an antenna, a docking port, and the ability to generate power. It needs to be able to support five Kerbals, have a viewing cupola, and maintain stability for 10 seconds. Now, as our reward, we're going to get 246,000 Kerbal credits. Now, I've pre-assembled a rocket that I'm going to show you now that will meet this objective. And I like to call it the Moon Skyscraper. So I'm going to call it Moon Skyscraper now, rather than leave it as the Moon Outpost. I left it like that just so I could find it. Uh, easily, but essentially the, the the part that's going to be landing on the moon is this so it's going to look like Let me just deploy the legs. It's going to look like that so you can see it's quite a bit of a beast Compared to the size of a Kerbal therefore a fun name is to call it the uh, Moon skyscraper now Or we could call it Trump Tower I suppose after Donald Trump very politically appropriate right now So let me just talk you through so we've got mystery goo. No, we've got uh, mono propellant tanks. They look like mystery goo um, We've got loads of solar panels. We can now use the extendable ones I've got some RCS because it's a bit unwieldy to control I've got a ladder that goes all the way down from the top and then we've got a little extendable ladder down here that reaches to the ground uh, some solar panels there and then inside here. I like my little service bays. So we have the science junior two mystery goo containers loads of batteries a uh, little barometer and a temperature gauge. Oh, that's not a temperature gauge. We've got two barometers. That's weird All right, let's just put one there and have a little look around the other side There we go. All right, and we've got two temperatures we'll Just Put that one there then Lovely jubbly. So that is our rocket. Uh, if I went to launch it right now, then uh, we would have a problem because the service bays are open. But apart from that, that's the rocket. All right, I'm just going to go and pre-record and then talk over the video. Um, but I just wanted to introduce it to you first. Be right back. All right, so without further ado, it's time to launch the mighty moon skyscraper. Off we go. Now, I've speeded this video up for your convenience, and I'm commentating post-haste. Uh, as usual, I'm trying to do a gravity turn, so at about uh, 50 meters per second you want to be tilting about 5 degrees to the right along that axis where it says 270 uh, on the left and 90 on the right on the nav ball. Now, this rocket may be slightly over-engineered, but it's the best I could come up with in order to launch the, the moon skyscraper. I didn't want to launch just anything, um, I wanted this to be a good, potentially upgradable interesting thing to put on the moon so i mean having a skyscraper i mean what could be better it's like a trump tower on the moon which quite frankly has never been done before certainly not in my videos anyway i could have even aimed to make it taller but obviously the taller you make it the more difficult it is to keep it upright as you will see at the end of this video <laughs> um yeah so here we go we're just completing our burn trying to get into an orbit the easiest way to get to the moon is just to get into an orbit with roughly equal apoapsis and uh, periapsis and then burn at any point along that trajectory, that orbital trajectory, in order to get your encounter with the moon. So here we go, we are we are up here. Tansel Kerman has uh, overcome his initial fears of being absolutely crap scared flying on these huge mainsail rockets. And here we go. So at the apoapsis, set a maneuver. You guys all know this. And so I've time skipped some of it forward. Here we go. Massive burn because we cut our we cut our uh, acceleration down while we were moving to our apoapsis. Sometimes it's better to do that. Sometimes it's better to keep a continual burn. But recently I've been struggling to do a continual burn, which actually gives me an equal periapsis and apoapsis. So if anyone's got any tips on how to do that then I'll be, that would be greatly appreciated. So here we go, we set our target as the moon, and we need to find out at what point along our trajectory um, around Kerbin, we can actually get an encounter with the moon. So sometimes you have to play around with the camera angle, and there we go, we have an encounter. So you just want to reduce that to as little speed as possible to get a nice encounter with the periapsis that you want. Um, obviously the periapsis in purple there is the periapsis, or the closest, point uh, when you encounter the moon. So here we go, we're now doing our acceleration burn. 
to get this wonderful encounter. Now, I am aiming to land inside one of the many craters on side the moon. There are many and numerous. There are actually 15 biomes on the moon. So if you can get, gather science, imagine gathering temperature, pressure, as only at this stage we only have temperature, pressure, mystery goo, crew reports, EVA reports, soil reports. Um, I probably missed one there, but I can't think of the other one. Imagine gathering all that data, then putting it inside our um, little um, mobile processing unit, turning that into scientific research points, and you, you're going to get a lot. I mean, I'm only going to be able to get one biome unless I do one landing spot, gather all the data, process it, and then move my rocket on to another landing spot. But you can see that big um, crater down on the center of the screen is uh, one of the numerous craters that exist on this beautiful rock orbiting Kerbin. Not too dissimilar to the moon in real life. And that one there, just near our periapsis, is where we're going to be landing. Um, there may be a flat spot which is suitable for our landing. We'll have to find out. So here we go. I'm just playing around with the maneuver nodes in order to, in order to choose sort of a landing spot that I want. So now we have to whiz round and get to the point at which we can start burning retrograde. Remember, retrograde will obviously be burning opposite to the direction you're flying, and it will slow you down enough in order to start plummeting to the surface, hopefully with some some degree of control. Now, the re you might think, why the hell has he got monopropellant tanks and, you know, RCS control on this? The simple reason is that it's a bit of an unwieldy beast at this stage with these huge fuel tanks still attached. It's hard to actually maneuver, so I just added them to speed up my ability to, um, you know, maneuver the, the craft. Um, and we've nearly run out of Delta V on this stage. Once we have jettisoned this part, we'll, we'll be able to control our rocket a lot easier. But I'm trying to make the most use out of what, the, what fuel is on this stage. So we're 15 and a half thousand meters above the surface and we've got a quite nice descending velocity just creeped over 130 meters per second now so we want to really try and control how quickly we're descending now obviously you don't want to keep stopping and starting you don't want to burn full speed reduce it to zero um, cut your engine and then let it descend and gain all that speed again I, I don't think that's the best way I think that's what they call a suicide burn uh, because you're continually accelerating and decelerating um, according to the gravity of the moon but um, I like to do kind of a kind of a steady burn in order to the aim is I suppose to reach zero meters per second at the exact point you touch the surface now, that's really blooming hard to do if you concentrate really hard and play a lot more safer than I do then I guess you could do it you need to do some calculations as well, but I don't need to do that anyway. So you have to be also careful on the moon because there's lots of slopes and mountains. Mountains actually exceed 5,000 meters. I think on the South Pole, there's a mountain that exceeds 7,000 meters. So you have to be careful at, at what um, point you're going to be landing at. Just uh, That's where Kerbal Engineer comes in handy for me. It lets me know what, altitude our, what our altitude is above the terrain, as well as what altitude we're currently at regardless of the terrain. Um, and gravity on the moon is one-sixth of Kerbin, so it's pulling you down one-sixth the strength that Kerbin pulls you down. Now this is quite a good landing, if I do say so myself. There's a slight slope that we'll be descending on, which you'll see may cause some issues in a few, but as it is, I'm quite happy with that landing. It means we can get Tansel, Ker Tansel Kerman out, get him to do some little soil samples. You can see we've now completed our contract. So that's made about 90,000 or 100,000. I think it's 90,000 Kerbal credits profit. So we do an EVA report while he's flying around. There's nothing better than flying around with a Kerbal on the surface of another planet that isn't Kerbin. Uh, it's quite frankly beautiful. So there's the ladder that I added. So I can use that to climb all the way up to the top to the viewing cupola. Um, Let's just take a little soil sample. Then we're going to go and plant a flag over here in the distance a little bit. Just to commemorate the momentous occasion that we land the moon skyscraper. There it is. I should have called it Kerbal Moon Skyscraper. 
but uh, we'll correct that whenever we feel the need. There we go, we've landed underneath the rocket, and the rocket actually takes off, and at this stage I'm like, holy crap! Solar panels have blown off, the rocket has tipped over, and technically, the rocket is still usable, so, I mean, it's not really anything to worry about, but I do worry, I don't like it. I can't take off again, I try to, but, um, yeah, the rocket's in not exactly an ideal position. Skyscrapers are not meant to be on their side, I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> so, essentially what I do is I do the whole mission again in order to complete in order to complete it properly so I can actually reuse it. So you'll see that in a second. And here we are guys, the finished project product blob product that's actually landed safely. It's relatively stable. It's on a slight incline still, but it's approximately in a, the same place where I landed before. It wasn't perfect, but uh, let me just show you what kind of science we're able to gather from this now. So I've done as many experiments as I can. I've used the um, Science Junior. I've beamed back some data. Um, I'm processing some data and same with the Mystery Goo, crew reports, etc, etc. So on the Mobile Processing Lab, we've now got 408 data out of 750 and it's producing 0.55 science per day so I guess in a year that's gonna produce roughly half of 365 which is about 187 science so not a bad mission all told and as I said we have the wonderful moon skyscraper on the surface which is almost visible from space sort of <laughs> there's the flag we planted I, I, I re sort of moved the rocket in order to try and get it on a flatter plane but uh, it wasn't entirely successful. But there we are. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys, including the failures. <laughs> Please let me know your thoughts. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any comments and queries you've got. Um, please click the like button and if anyone wants to sponsor me on Patreon, please feel free. I've um, got some brilliant sponsors at the moment and you can sponsor me from as little as $1 a month to keep this channel alive. Thank you ever so much, guys. Take care. Bye-bye and see you soon.